Around 3 million years ago, some of the earliest human ancestors called Australopithecus afarensis live in Africa. These early humans had to search for food and deal with the harsh environment and dangerous animals. Every day was a struggle to stay alive. One such early human fossil was uncovered and her name, Lucy. Today, through the latest scientific research, we'll reconstruct the wonders and terrors of Lucy's prehistoric realm. This is life and death 3 million years ago. Imagine a sunrise 3.2 million years ago in Ethiopia's Afar region during the Pliocene era. Lush forests and grassy plains are home to grazing antelope and elephants by a winding river. This is the world of Brave Lucy, an Australopithecus afarensis whose fossils will one day transform our understanding of human origins. Lucy stands just one meter tall, but she's a giant in her species. During her time, Lucy roamed the wilds of ancient Africa. This spectacular land Lucy called home teemed with life. Some familiar because they are ancestors to the animals we see today. Some truly bizarre. Lucy entered the world surrounded by wondrous beasts lumbering along were Theropithecus brumpti, giant vegetarian monkeys twice the size of the Galada gorillas. Despite their herbivore diet, angering one could mean a grisly end. Prowling the savanna were megantarian, saber-toothed cats built like leopards on steroids. Their colossal jaws and dagger-like fangs were perfectly evolved for taking down large prey. And in every stream lurked crocodiles, countless ancient species far more varied than those of today. For a young Australopithecus like Lucy, danger lurked everywhere. We have found many examples in the archaeological record of these early humans being killed by predators. And the saddest among them was the famous ancient human fossil of a three-year-old child's skull found in Taung, South Africa. This child lived about two to three million years ago. The skull has holes punched into the eye sockets made by a big bird of prey similar to the modern African crowned eagle. Despite the challenges of this primeval world, brave Lucy survived and thrived. She probably foraged for yummy plants, played with friends, and evaded predators with her group's help. And most incredibly, Lucy walked upright on just two legs. Little did she know, her kind was embarking on an extraordinary evolutionary path that would one day lead to modern humans. Her fossilized bones provide a unique glimpse into the lives of our long ago ancestors. Although Lucy's short, wide hips, fully extending knees and other features show she walked upright, her upper body retained more ape-like qualities. But that's not all. In 2012, a new layer of the narrative unraveled as anthropologists found a complete shoulder blade from a young Australopithecus afarensis named Selam. This was an important find because Lucy's shoulder blades were missing, leaving a gap in our anatomical knowledge. Selam's shoulder was more like a modern gorilla's than a human's, suggesting these early humans still climbed trees sometimes. But these traits could also be ancient futures passed down from the last common ancestor with chimps. No longer useful but changing slowly without evolutionary pressure. However, roughly 40% of Lucy's skeleton was uncovered indicating excellent preservation of her body. Because of this, scientists now know more about her anatomy and how she managed to stand up on her two legs. But we still have to use Salam's Australopithecus skeleton to describe Lucy's shoulder futures since both were from the same era. Apart from avoiding predators, Lucy's childhood was probably similar to modern apes. 
playing with other youngsters, rolling in the grass, pouncing on siblings, watching adults, and learning survival skills. While a rewarding life, Lucy's world was fraught with danger. She must have drawn on her resourcefulness, intelligence, and social bonds to survive. Though upright walking age migration and frees up hands, Lucy's kind retains some reminders of tree-dwelling ancestry. Now, here is where things got challenging for Lucy. Her band probably avoided venturing out at night. When pitch black darkness concealed hungry carnivores on the prowl, but daytime also brought ample threats. Lucy probably gave a wide berth to fearsome megantarian, saber-toothed cats built like leopards on steroids. And she would have steered clear of riverbanks where crocodiles lurk just below the surface, ready to snap up thirsty creatures. Her compatriots would have acted as extra pairs of eyes and ears to detect impending danger. And there was strength in numbers when confronted with confrontations. So, how was Lucy able to gather food? Like us, Lucy and her crew enjoy good food. But securing tasty meals takes work. The raw ingredients available to Lucy were probably wild plants at best. Lucky for her. Australopithecus teeth can grind diverse fare. Studies show a fair bit of Lucy's diet came from C4 plants like grasses. Her kind would have foraged for nuts, fruits, and tender shoots across woodlands and savannas. When particularly hungry, they may have mashed up abrasive grit with vegetation to extract nutrients. Butchered animal bones from around Lucy's time contain telltale cut marks, evidence of meat consumption. How did tiny Lucy take down large beasts? She probably didn't. Her band likely scavenged leftover meat from predator kills. Such protein-rich meals gave them strength to roam long distances. Lucy definitely snacked when she could. But Seasonal variability kept her tribe on the move, searching for nourishment. During harsh dry spells, even tenacious tubers diminished. She likely kept exploring and experimenting to beat the odds. Ingenuity was mandatory. Hungry Lucy possessed a revolutionary advantage foreign to other apes. Walking on two legs, freed from knuckle walking, Lucy used her arms more flexibly for gathering food and holding babies. Yeah, you heard that right. One of the biggest events in Lucy's life may have been giving birth. Lucy's changing body also influenced social development. As her narrow hips constrained childbirth, ladies likely cooperated as midwives during delivery. This bonding behavior laid foundations for the tribes and communities that became a pillar of human society. Childbirth was likely becoming more difficult for early humans like Lucy, walking upright narrowed hips while bigger brains strained to fit through the birth canal. Lucy's babies probably had to twist and turn to make it out. So, unlike chimpanzees, Lucy likely didn't give birth alone. She may have been surrounded by other women, her mother, sisters, friends, who assisted with the intense process of bringing new life into the world. We can imagine Lucy moaning and sweating as her sisters coach her through each push and contraction until finally, after hours of struggle, a tiny new member of the troop greets the sun. This increased cooperation and community support around childbirth could have had huge impacts on human evolution. When we think of early humans working together, we often picture hunting scenes. But the challenges of childbirth may have played an equally important role in shaping our social bonds and collaborative spirit. But here's the revelation that adds a whole new layer to the story. At the same time as Lucy, the Homo habilis, also called the handyman, lived in the same era. It was these early people who became smarter and who first used tools, which made them stand out. 
Lucy and her kind probably watched Homo habilis make and use simple stone tools and were amazed by how creative and flexible they were. Innovation propelled our genus forward. Simple tools shaped by human hands granted access to new resources. This boosted survival, fueling bigger brains and inspiring new tools. Many apes and monkeys use basic tools to get food. So, early humans like Lucy likely use simple tools too. What makes humans unique is our ability to modify and improve tools, especially stone tools. For a long time, scientists thought the first modified stone tools were Aldoan tools. These were made by Homo habilis around 1 million years after Lucy. But recently, Older stone tools were found dating back 3.3 million years ago. These are called the Lomiquite tools and are the oldest modified tools ever discovered. Animal bones from 3.4 million years ago also show cut marks made by tools. This means Lucy's group may have eaten a fair amount of meat and made tools to get it. The finding raises fascinating questions about when early humans started using complex tools. Early tools use hints at enhanced cognition unique to humanity's lineage. Lucy perceived objects as more than inanimate things. She envisioned their potential, realizing that stone, properly struck, yielded a cutting blade. This spark of imagination resulted in technologies catapulting us beyond other apes. Which brings us to the question, how exactly was Lucy's thinking ability back then? Inside Lucy's skull, dramatic changes were unfolding. Her brain was only slightly larger than a chimpanzee's. Yet chimps today cannot make or use stone tools, while evidence suggests Lucy's kind could. Some rewiring must have been taking place within her ancient hominin brain. On the outside, Lucy didn't look too different from her ape cousins. But small changes in the organization of her brain granted this early human ancestor new technological abilities that would help her survive. While we don't know exactly how Lucy's thinking differed from other apes, these cognitive advancements hint at the origins of human intelligence, technology, and culture. They laid the foundations for the bigger brains and complex societies to come in human evolution. Another question would be how exactly did Lucy die with her level of intelligence? She probably met the inevitable fate that befalls us all. She passed away. Examining the cracks in her preserved bones, some think Lucy might have taken a tumble, while others believe larger animals could be the culprits. Regardless, her departure would have surely brought sincere mourning from her family. Humans, much like chimpanzees, grieve for their departed kin, staying by their side for days. Considering the strong bonds that Australopithecus might have shared, we can only imagine the pain her family felt watching over her lifeless form. Little did they know that over 3 million years later, we would still be captivated by Lucy's tales. The stories not just of her own journey, but of the origins of everyone living today. Though scientists are still unsure about the exact reason for Lucy's demise, let's explore some potential scenarios and autopsy findings that shed light on her final hours. One possibility is a tragic fall from a great height. Supported by reports of cracks found in her preserved bones, accidents in the hazardous terrain she inhabited might have led to her untimely end. Some experts, however, had different opinions. They suggest Lucy might have fallen prey to a predator in her ancient environment, where saber-toothed cats and other frightening creatures roamed freely. Lucy, like any other creature, could have met her end in the jaws of these formidable hunters. Other experts propose that illness may have contributed to Lucy's death, evidenced by signs of bone diseases in her ancient remains. Just as individuals nowadays face a range of health issues, Lucy might have battled with ailments that eventually led to her passing. As with any historical discovery, differing opinions abound. 
Some specialists argue that Lucy's bone fractures might not be linked to her cause of death, but rather occurred posthumously. These fissures could have developed long after Lucy's passing due to natural processes or other factors. Lucy could not have imagined that millions of years later, her fossilized bones would shake the foundations of her understanding of human origins. After her skeleton was discovered in Ethiopia in 1974 by Dr. Donald Johansson, this Australopithecus afarensis became an icon of evolution. Today, new technologies allow us to unlock Lucy's secrets as never before. CT scans peer inside her inner ear structures, revealing how she navigated her world. Ultra-precise digital models of her ribs highlight key differences between Lucy's kind and our own. Lucy's profound influence continues as we uncover new facets of her ancient life. Who knows what other evolutionary clues lie waiting inside her bones. For now, her story captivates our collective imagination. A glimpse into the distant past that illuminates the winding path that led to modern humanity. The tale of Lucy echoes across the eons, promising more wonders yet to come. Her legacy drives us to keep searching, keep questioning, keep exploring the mysteries of our ancient ancestors. There are so many more discoveries waiting to rewrite the dramatic story of our shared origins.